Oh this shit, that's gonna be will a now be recorded. <laughs> Just the thing records it. This one pops off and leave it to who it was. So, what's our topic today, CeeLo? Oh, what the hell did I mention earlier? Um, what did I mention earlier? Oh, guys, what oh what God. people what what you guys want to see for for this year as far as content goes? Um, you know, and also um, what you want to see going forward with improvements on lasers. What what features uh, don't we offer or can we offer? Oh, Lord. Or that you like on, or that you like on another machine uh, well, that, that we don't have. have a can of worms. Yeah, because a light button to turn the interior lights off. Okay. I, I agree right. with you on that one, and I've I've already put that request in. Yeah, I do agree it's, with you. It's hard to get them to change something. They do make you know. There's evolution and innovation, and they do change, but. Uh, and they they listen to all of the requests that we put in there, but oftentimes it goes uh, without being implemented for probably a decent reason that I don't know about. But uh, I think the light's a good idea too, so you can see the red dot easier and stuff like that. Yeah, some wow. material you just can't see it, you know. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Just unplug the lights. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Uh, You're assuming void. I have full access around the edges of my machines. I think you can actually reach inside the machine and unplug. Mm. I'm too short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put him to work. Holy crap! Right. Grant Grant Look got demo Grant got demoted. He lost his water mm. cooler. Uh, <laughs> man, what are you talking you about? It. He's in the one of the penthouse suites. He has a window and everything. Yeah, but he used to have a water cooler. He's got the best seat in the building. Well, looks like Grant, he's Grant used to look like something. he was 12. Now he looks like he's 13. So, <laughs> yeah, good job, Grant. I, I think to he's just trying what... to grow that mustache since he was 13. That and the hair. It's like, wow. Now, what see, look, happened Grant, down there? Grant comes to join us, and then everybody gives yeah, him everybody flag. He's not going to come next time. Come in here. I think everybody's <laughs> just, just a little is... jealous. And we love you, Grant. That's why. Um, everybody I'm wishes they were 25 with some long hair. And Brian, I don't have any hair, right, so right. yeah, I'm a little jealous. I Brian, just wish I was 25. Little... Forget the long hair. You're getting a little scruffy, Brian. You got to start looking like Jim. Nah, I got a little ways to go. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think this isn't growing like, like that. But I think I am beating him on uh, the ugly meter every day. I think I get a little uglier than he does. Well, I've had I don't that know. beat for years. I still try to figure out why my wife married me. She's like, of course, she's got eyesight issues like or something. A, like I always say, I got a face made for radio. <laughs> but anyway, so back to what we were talking about. The light's a decent idea. Did you hear that, Grant? We were just popping off ideas and stuff. I mean, we've been asked about that a few times. Can you turn them off? Can you unhook them? Um, I mean, that wouldn't be necessarily too expensive of an addition, a switch and a little extra wire and a little extra time to pop one on there. I don't know. Couldn't, it, couldn't they actually put Ooh, something in, too? Like, couldn't you get with, like, light burn and put something in there where you could get on the TL timer or something and actually shut it off? Or am I, like, completely uh, way off freaking base? Yeah, I mean, you, you could make the lights turn off when the red lamp comes on. But that's not really when you need it when it's running. You need it before. But uh, I don't now. You can't effectively trigger it that way. You'd have to change the entire system, and still, I don't know if it'd be possible. So, uh, but I mean, it's as simple as just putting a switch in series with the power feed from the bus that goes over to the lights. Yeah, so. and they could put it over there by the uh, by the the uh, air control. That would be perfect. Yeah, or the e stop button even closer. That way, they're only running a couple feet of wire instead of five. But yeah. Uh, definitely put it and down. Door, door latches instead of them all having to have keys. I know we talked about this when we went and saw Chris. Um, latches would be nice instead of always having to grab a key. I think part of that is dictated by the FDA. They require that it be something that's not tooled in a way where a child could grab a lever and twist it. At least well, that's, that's what the oven has, though. 
Yeah, that's right. Odin's got Odin that. does have that. Uh, that's technically toolless our, too. Our our other brand that we started with, it was just you pull the thing and then you twist it and then the door opened. Yeah, oh, that's right. part of the problem. That's the other brand. No, that was the only good thing about that damn brand. That and the light switch. <laughs> that was the only good things about that other brand. Hey, you know what I did to uh, keep preventing from accidentally hitting the e-stop? But you can still hit the e-stop, so that way you don't accidentally hit it with your belt. Took elbow. it out? No. <laughs> it's uh, empty tapering. I set it right at the e-stop, so your bell will bow, yeah, your bell bow, <laughs> when you were reaching across to grab something else, doesn't actually hit it, and then you're going, what the hell's going on? But you can oh, still slap it like a whack-a-mole, and it'll work. Yeah, but I can still smack it to get it to work. But it's somewhat protected to keep from uh, accidentally tagging it. An illuminated e stop would be fantastic too. To On that trigger. But then that means you need to press it if it's lit up. <laughs> no, it lights up, up when it's pressed. Light when pressed. Lights up when it's, yeah, oh. it lights up when it's depressed. depressed. That would be perfect. <laughs> when yes. it's depressed. There's probably a ticket a week, a Facebook post a week about an e stop button that gets bumped. Uh, especially when there's multiple people working on it. Um, and then people cap. forget or don't know that there's a little bit of spring action even when it's pressed. So you got to give that good clockwise turn. So that light would definitely um, alleviate a lot of that. Yeah, and it's really just put a normally, uh, normally open contact. So when the button's pressed, it just back feeds 120 to uh, an LED right. light or even a 120 volt bulb. I'd rather do LED, but. That's when what I did. When you are cross trying to grab something when it's all shut off and you're trying to figure out why it won't turn on. And you know you didn't even touch that stupid button. Yeah. Yeah. My, my grandson likes to come through and smack them when I'm not paying attention. So that's always <laughs> fun. But it's even worse on the Aurora because when you kill the when you hit the e-stop switch on the Aurora, it doesn't kill everything. The lights are still on, so you think it's on, you know? And you, you're sending jobs to it, and you're like, what's going on? It's It's on. But so that's a little confusing. But hey, Brian, do it back to him. I bet he stops. Smack him when he's not paying attention. Yeah, I better not do that. I I kind of want to avoid a DHS uh, uh, <laughs> as much as I can. Oh, we're not. And and he's gonna end up being six three or six four. So one day he might remember that and then beat me up. So I gotta watch what I do. It's like a puppy. You need to train him when he's young. This way he'll have respect <laughs> for you when he gets bigger and he can pound you into nothing. Right. So, that's just when you chop them at the knees they all end up at our same height um so white switch yeah those are good ideas i had something too and i can't remember what it was because it's something that travis and i was actually talking about the other day oh well then definitely don't don't yeah i can i could go to, i could go over to the um to the fibers and i already know what that one's going to be if travis was in here Go to JPT. Um, I've, uh, we're working on the e-commerce system. I've been um, sweating it for a couple months now, um, but we're starting to get some extra parts into the point where we may be able to make some of the like the power supplies, and uh, you know we'll put the optics back on there. Maybe even some uh, uh, red dot, you know, stuff like that uh, for click and order, uh, and also integrate it so it's easier with a warranty. For instance, if Jim needed a power supply, well, if the gym that I can see needed a power supply. I could send him a link and it would take him right to the checkout with free shipping. He could choose an expedited method if he wanted to get it faster. And that would be the only part that he would be responsible for. The rest of it would be kind of free because it's a warranty thing. Just click. So I think that's going to end up being really neat uh, in streamlining, uh, getting parts and wondering where they are and stuff like that as we get that published. So nice. more to come on that. One of the things I know that they did, because you and I talked about it ages ago, which was going to the 8-inch ports on the 51s and 63s, mm -hmm. I still think the 35 should go to 8 and just put it generic across the entire board to allow more airflow in the 35s. And that may be something they gravitate toward. It, one reason they don't like making change is like when we changed from the centrifugal fan to the inline fan before we even changed port sizes. That was a nightmare. <laughs> You know, documenting it all, finding out which shipments had that, which one, you know, and trying to navigate through all that stuff. But uh, maybe that'll be a thing, you know, 
down down the road. Uh, I know they look at all the feedback of you know if we have something that might indicate something that needs to be changed, they're good about listening to it. So. What is That's that? About noise that keeps right, somebody's got some got some feedback going on. There's actually some weird bugs going on. Yeah. What's Grant got? Oh, is he showing us or somebody else? Showing you. Chris told me to get this. Wait, wait, wait hold on. USB to active something. Act, active oh, an active repeater. repeater cable for the, yeah. Because yeah. the one that Sir, comes with the is like three feet. Yeah. <clears throat> that ain't going to work. I, I wish those controllers had Ethernet on them. That'd be cool. Well, there you go. There's something you could add to it is making these things totally wireless. The Rita controller doesn't ball. like the Wi-Fi protocol. I know, but I just threw it in there. <laughs> <laughs> so that just gets like even Ethernet with the length you can run it, the Wi-Fi, you know, man, that just seems like it's encouraging people to work remotely of their lasers. I don't know. That's just my two cents. Like, I, yeah, set up a little workstation. You can remote desktop over your Wi-Fi too. It, it's one hundred and twenty dollars for one of these little brick PCs. You've got the licenses for it from Lightburn. You can hardwire it and then have it connect to your Wi-Fi and just still let it do hardwired to the machines. Um, that that'd be my recommendation if you really want <laughs> Wi-Fi. I'm trying to watch the box. <laughs> Sorry. What? That's uh, where it's coming from. Is it me? It's coming it's... from Sam. Uh, it's it Jay, no. whoever Jay was. It's probably Rotoboss. Sam's not Brian. And it could be. Jason, is that him trying to call in? Not me. I'm on. I'm on mute. Okay. Not Sam. Sam's on mute. So whoever this is with the J, just the regular J, that's joining. So, I guess since we have a whole bunch of regulars, what kind of content do you guys want to see for the next coming webinars? What can we discuss that will inspire you guys to come back? I mean, you guys are always here, so that doesn't matter. But we have no life. <laughs> the only time I get to talk to people. Yeah. Well, is this machine public. technical questions and information? Is this uh, design <laughs> information or what? Because well, I just learned something uh, really cool this last week. Yeah, so it, I, I'm going to guess uh, the way I'm going to roll with it because I've tried to conform it to just being a pre-sales thing where we talk about lasers and the questions that people have. Um, and it just doesn't want to flow that way. And, and I've been trying to fight it for two years and it's not happening. So it's going to be a free for all round table. We can talk about whatever the heck you want to talk about. Hey, that's the after show. You're be be careful saying that. Hey, Chris. <laughs> hey, Chris, how's that auto boss? It, it's sitting on my uh, desk shelf very, very well. Uh, I have <laughs> not had a chance to tinker with it. It's on the list, hey, though. It ain't supposed, supposed to be a paperweight. I know, I know. We could talk about Bill. Jason's new uh, monster he's creating. Talk about what? Your new monster. Which one? The new, new one, the prototype, the CAD drawing. Oh well, there's a there's a new, newer one too. <laughs> you haven't shared that one with me yet. The the uh, the um, Chuck one. Some of the talent. Yeah, the Talon Chuck. Yeah, I just I'm doing some redesign on it. Are you so driving? It can be used as a as a flat. Yeah. All right, I just want to make oh, sure. I can you hear it. No, I just I just want to oh, make sure no. you can see us. We're naked. We're all naked. <laughs> Why? What are you doing behind my back? Oh, well, in that case, let me pull over real quick. <laughs> um, no, it, it it'll. It, <laughs> It can be used as a flat chuck. It's got an articulated head, and then you can position it in the vertical 90 for for doing other stuff on a fiber or whatever. 
Yeah, oh, you mean like putting a carousel on it and putting pins on it or something like that? Or Yeah, pretty much. The biggest question so, I have got to so, ask you, and I keep meaning to, is um, using it for wood turning bowls, like for uh, people that's got into the point of, um, we sort of talked about it, needing the colorification. I've been able to chuck into the bottom part of a wood turning um, or wide enough to grab a turned bowl uh well i mean the uh, right now the arms are set up to reach the inside of a 12 ounce, or uh and there he goes yep. you there yep yeah okay sorry someone tried to call um Right now, it's set up to, to reach the inside of a, a 12, 14 ounce dog bowl. And, but the arm, I mean, the arms can be made for it to, to grab much larger things. Um, What's the maximum the, diameter? The added benefit to it is. Can go. Uh, I'd, have, I'd have to check. I don't know right off the top of my head. Um, but like I said, the, the, the max diameter of the chuck itself is enough for a 30 ounce cup and then you got your extension arms that can be bolted on to the to the chuck um jaws to extend that and that can be you know really infinitely lengthened and then it's got vertical it's got vertical adjustment so you can raise raise and lower it if you need to do something bigger you can raise it up um, so you got the option to go 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 gadget arms, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And then it's gonna have the the ascend the ascend lift mechanism, so there's not gonna be any towers or anything like that to be in the way or um, anything like that. And then of course it's got the the four jaw four jaw chuck, um, which is I mean it's just a little bit more reliable because you got more contact points. Yeah, it's just like your but, uh, chucks on your, your your good your Nova chucks for your lathes. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where I got the idea to do that was you know wood wood turning. They use you know four jaw or more depending on the size, um, just for just for the ease of use. And then of course you can get a lot more gripping pressure on it in a e more even manner than what what you can with a three. Well, that's completely creepy. Something in my off shop just started playing by itself. <laughs> but, the name Taz. Yeah, that, that'll that'll probably be out <laughs> around April or May, I would assume. Only three of us got that one. Oh, the Taz. I wasn't yeah. paying attention. You wouldn't. You wouldn't have gotten. We have AI in our in our support systems in this little. PM window pops up with Taz giving us suggestions on how to do things and offering to help. Kind of like that little Pleasure. Microsoft Office paperclip that used to pop up and you always had to get rid of. And it plays a nice little jingle for you, too. It does. But the paperclip died, didn't it? For a reason. Yeah. I like the paperclip. What about this, like, chat GPT stuff? It's like paperclip on steroids. Yeah. Need to integrate that to our knowledge base. That's something else we're going to work on this year is some of the AI and triggering and oh, notifications wow. and neat stuff that our system can do to make it more efficient. Because our customer base keeps growing and us three stay the same. Well, I'm growing a little bit too around. But <laughs> if your customer base is growing as fast as I think it is, uh, y'all may want to figure something out. Ah, uh, man, oh, you it. don't know how far you don't know how far to bend a pencil until it breaks, right? <laughs> Good analogy. <laughs> uh, Chris Myers. Yes. Did you see the video that I linked to you about the air pressure? I have not back? reviewed that. That's right. That's right next to the Rotoboss testing. You, the 150 you PSI. Yeah. 
you asked for it and, and we did it. We bypassed the system, so I didn't cause any problems. Um, I'll let you know a little secret. 40 PSI, 75 PSI, they didn't make a damn bit of a difference. Okay. I figured there'd be a diminishing point in returns, you know, on that after about 30 or 40 PSI. I, we cut it 40 <laughs> all the time, and there is no difference. Plus that little quarter inch nozzle and these small regulators that'll push that won't go past 75. Trust me, I tried. Cool. Yep. Yeah, and I think a lot of people also will um, set the regulator 55 PSI and then they'll measure the pressure with one of the little digital sensors. Like, oh, I'm only getting 20 something. I think George brought it up a couple weeks ago. You know, that's, that's due to flow, right? And how well your other system can flow that six mil poly tubing and all that. So, but it's interesting to know that, you know, cranking it up really doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Uh, that I, that, right price, that tubing is only going to move, move air so fast and right. so much. Exactly. So. I think Brian I said that. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Jim. Oh, I just think Brian said that for the last two years, it becomes where you always use mitigated or once you get so high, I mean, you did not see the reason to go any higher because of you loss of or loss of return or something like yeah. that you always say yeah diminishing well return. Diminishing. I, I, yeah, diminishing i'm glad return. i'm glad that they did that improved because they proved a couple a number of things they proved that running 90 psi isn't beneficial and they've also determined through their experimentation that our maximum pressure of 55 psi to protect the airline components is sufficient to be able to do what you need to do so people don't need the argument well i need to turn it up that high because you really don't so that'll help reinforce that so uh, we also did i didn't i didn't post it or anything we experimented with focal distances um to to see what what it looked like you know and how deep you know at what points you know granted we're using ours um ap lens but the, for that lens specifically, the 10.5 millimeter, that's, you don't focus anything different. It cut mm -hmm. perfect, but when you started focusing deeper and deeper and deeper, it screwed the cut up something fierce. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about y'all's, I would figure generally it would work the same. Yeah, the, the values that we give, like the six millimeter distance between the nozzle for the two inch lens and the 10 millimeter for the four are nominal figures. You know, it can vary by a couple of millimeters. If you really want to dial it in, you can do a ramp test, you know, and you could even do that with those APs uh, and actually do a ramp test and look and, and see what focal distance you're getting when you do a ramp test or a focal test in light burn is what they call it using the Z axis stuff. Um, but what does the nozzle look like on those APs? How big is the orifice for the air oh, approximately? Is so, it? It's, okay, it's, two it's, or three millimeters? That's uh, it's slightly larger than, than our standard. It's hard to see. Still about two or three millimeters. So, okay, you still get yeah. a good directional flow uh, coaxially for the cutting. So We got a newbie, Darcy. How are that's you? Hi. That's what I started to say. And is it the same Darcy that I just talked to? Uh, probably. I don't think there's that many of us, right? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. You're uh, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I work for a company. We currently have a really big Trotec laser, but it's like 15 years old and it's dying. So um, my boss wanted me to research some more definitely affordable lasers that we could possibly get. Um, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to listen in and and kind of learn more about the machine. Awesome. Well, if you have any Ask specific questions, questions you want. yeah, be fair. Um, you know. Yeah, so uh, uh, we're like a fine art studio. So we do mostly very large um, engravings of like vectors and photos and stuff. I guess, um, I guess for like engraving time, like we're looking at the biggest machine, like the 63 by I think 39. Um, how <clears throat> long do you think it would take to like engrave like that entire bed area? <laughs> hours i can yeah. would it be like an eight hour day because that's kind of no. like what i'm longer i can i can give you a very good uh, what what kind of photos are we doing what are we talking about uh they're not always it's they're kind of like big um it's fine art so it's a little 
but they're like these big vector circuit boards essentially and we do paper okay. veneer that's yeah. that that simplifies it a little bit instead of using yep. a photorealistic bitmap for sure mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so like a, a bitmap would be much slower than like a vector black and white? Typically, because when you're vectoring, you're either burning or you're not, you know, and it just turns on and off where it needs to. Whereas if you're using grayscale, for instance, you're varying power and doing all kinds of things. Okay. Uh, but the, you can typically get better speeds and, and optimize it for, you know, better speed using a vector or something like that. Whether it's the format that it's in, whether it's a JPEG or a bitmap or whatnot, as long as it's high enough resolution is in, 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 in consequential. Is that the right word? Um, <laughs> because you can always either trace it or use threshold or some other dithering method where you have a high uh, ratio between what dots it's going to pick up and which ones it isn't according to the contrast. But okay. I'll let Loco, uh, CeeLo, uh, expand on that a little bit. He's our photo guy. Now, one thing I'll preface it with, um, when when you have that Trotec, that's an RF tube machine, so the the laser beam is a lot smaller, it's a lot denser, and you can also control it at very low power. So if you had a piece of paper and just wanted to etch the paper and not burn through, that would be super easy with your Trotec. Not mm -hmm. so easy with a 130 watt tube because you can't really dial it down low enough to be able to do that without mitigating it with the speed that you're going to use. Oh, got so, it. Um, okay, but, that's helpful. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you can't do you know, beautiful, delicate engravings with the Nova 63 at all. I'm just saying it's going to be totally different to you than working that Trotec as far as dialing in speeds and powers. You know, there's there's a few parallels, but um, there's a little hump there, but we can get you through that. Oh, okay. So, so at a full width engraving on the 63, um, no other settings messed with um, i'm looking at 11 hours and that's top to bottom left to right completely filled. solid okay that's 100 percent coverage yeah. okay and yeah. so you you need to like you do in a print printed document you could look at your design and, and trying to guesstimate how much of the area is actually going to be engraved so if mm -hmm. you have 25 percent coverage you could do some napkin math and say it'll take a quarter of that time um, so, you know, how intricate and how much of the area is actually going to be engraved and how much isn't can matter. Yeah. 11 hours isn't, isn't too bad. Um, I don't think our church no. has the RF. I mean, I think now, they do if now, you're doing circuit just... boards, it seems to me like there's a lot of stripes and a lot of things like that. And then you're mm -hmm. looking at more like a 50% coverage instead of a hundred percent coverage. Mm -hmm. So theoretically you could cut your time in half. It depends on the layout and the motion planning. Uh, yeah, you yeah. can you can mitigate you can mitigate the negative area. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, I guess I have another question too. Um, for uh, the lenses, because um, I've worked with laser machines where the lenses get fogged super easy. In our Trotec, like I probably clean that lens like once every two months. Like it never gets dirty, even though we um, engrave like graphite paper, like really really dusty stuff. Um, how are like the lenses? Like how are they? Uh, are they like pretty good with um, some of them last 11 do? years some of them last 11 minutes okay. uh, <laughs> so a, a lot of that is having to do with how you adjust the air assist because the air assist delivery on this machine is probably going to be a little different than what you're used to as well on mm -hmm. the Nova series the air comes out the same place that the laser beam does it's um, coaxial with the laser beam so it shoots right down into the curve whereas on the Trotex and some of the others they have a maybe a tube that comes in at a 45 or something to exactly. help dissipate yeah. the smoke for engraving uh, so there's a little bit of difference there if you use enough air uh, and prop you know check check the lens appropriately depending on your work and how much smoke you produce and how many hours duty cycle that kind of mm -hmm. thing you can develop a PM schedule pretty quick but I usually check my lenses before I run a job but it's not like something you're gonna have to stop and clean every 30 minutes you know, okay, or anything great. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, I don't mean to like. <laughs> no, no, I <laughs> everybody else has any questions? <laughs> it's it's uh, the Darcy show. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all right. Awesome. No, it's perfect. Oh. Yeah, this is what this is supposed to be all about, anyways. That's guys, right. Yep. So I know you guys do like the one hour um, training, but it, there's like no option to have like a technician come and like set the thing up. Is that? No, um, 
there isn't at some point there may be there's some third party people or some private individuals or other places that you may be able to contract that out through thunder doesn't specifically offer that at the moment although most of our stuff is tailored in, in our support system as well um, so that it's pretty much you know a go at your own pace self-help kind of thing as far as setup goes and most people get through it it's intimidating but we can get you over the humps we got you know a lot of good resources and stuff for that um, you may be able to find somebody depending on your location. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, there are people out there. You'll find that it's really expensive most of the time if you get somebody decent, like a thousand dollars a day plus expenses. Yeah, that'd uh, be fine. Expensive. Um, if, if you can find someone in your area, I have a very short list of ones that I have come across. I can't vouch for any of them. You know, I, I just did Google searches, <laughs> and I have about five states uh, that have somebody that's listed there. You know, and we can make that information available to you. Oh, that but would as far be great. as getting the machine set up, like I've probably set up three or four machines now. You can get mm -hmm. it uncrated and completely set up in about an hour. Yeah, I've been watching some videos, and it looks it looks somewhat simple, but also like with the Trotec, I've tried to like fiddle with things inside, and I've set fires. So I've just Ugh. told myself I'm not These, a tech, like I can't. Yeah. Now you also got to remember that. that these have been designed for the end user to maintain them, you know, so a lot mm -hmm. of the parts are module or modular and we have instructions that are fine tuned directly, you know, to support the end user becoming the mechanic. So we probably take a look at it through a different lens than Trotec does. You know, we yeah. want the people to be, if they want to be, to be proficient in their machines and be able to maintain them fully, whether it's replacing a power supply or a tube or any of that. Uh, the end users eventually end up doing all of that good stuff. So. And there's what part of, depending what part of the U.S. you're in, I'm guessing you're in the U.S. Yeah, we're in Los Angeles. Okay. I'm sure there's somebody in your immediate area, too, that's part of the Thunder family that's not part of the actual employees of Thunder that a lot of these people are so willing to help just because it's part of the Thunder family, you could probably reach out and find somebody that could help you. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's true. The, yeah, there that are a few great. places in California. Light Object is one that I would recommend. I think they're in Sacramento. Okay. I don't know how far away that is. Marco Wong, they're technically kind of in a way competition. They sell some engravers too, but they don't, they mostly sell parts and do DIY stuff for people that want to make their own. So they have mm -hmm. a lot of nuts and bolts and bearings and power supplies and things like that as well. And they're US based, you know, so you can get it quick. Oh, that's so. great. Okay. That would be somebody local. There may be another one. Um, and that's part of what these meetings are for. So they're, we're now meeting every other week. And anytime you have any kind of technical question that you can sort of wait on, you can pop them off in here and the knowledge base that's in here beyond even just the, the actual tech support is pretty amazing. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, this is super helpful. I won't, um, yeah, sorry. No more questions. <laughs> yeah, can oh. continue. <laughs> No, totally. no, you're, you're good. You can ask as many as you like. Sometimes it's hard to uh, get a good topic going, so we're glad you're here to help us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. <clears throat> you're filling the dead space, the dead air. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, what's the name of your like company, a... Darcy? Sorry. Oh, it's um, it's just an artist that I work for. Her name is Analia Saban. She's a fine artist um, here in LA, and we show in kind of galleries all over the world. Um, but we've used our Trotec for a very long time and she's slowly dying and they don't even really make the tube anymore because I think they changed to the, the, those RF ones. It's like an older mm -hmm. tube. Um, so she's, she's banding, she's doing terrible things right now. We can kind of make stencils with the machine, but that's, that's pretty much it. Gotcha. All right. Well, like I say, anything we can do to help, we'll be glad, you know, to point you yeah, in the right direction yeah. as far as information goes. So. Awesome. Thank you. Another question though. Yeah. You're about to ask another question. Oh, yeah. This is a very, I don't know if like all machines do this, um, but um, since we do kind of those really large format engravings that take hours and hours, like um, we, if if it's like a really big thing where I have to stay here 11 hours, I, I will. But it's it was because like our machine, if you stopped it and started again, there would be a very prominent line where you would start. Is that kind of just like a across the board with laser machines that like? Mm. It. It if can if it's not, be. Yeah. Uh, like if it's if it's not thermally cooled correctly, it can be. If it has time, you know, is there's there's, I guess thermal, right, Brian? Mm -hmm. 
It's going to be um, heating of the tube is inefficiency. So the hotter the tube gets, like in my old machine, I would pause it, run to Home Depot to get something, come back, and it would be 10 times darker because yeah. it had no chiller. So we actually have a chiller built in to keep everything consistent. So it should stay consistent. Okay. Yeah. Now, cool. the other part of that is, is if it just loses its place a little bit, you know, that could be another reason where you could get an anomaly there. Most of the time, the machine behaves pretty well if it, as far as recovery. Now, if you have a power outage, for instance, if you're two hours into a six hour job and the power, you know, gets cut for a few minutes and it comes back on, it will generally pick up exactly where it left off and continue. So, and that's pretty reliable. Um, if you do have to interrupt it and stop and go home and come back the next day, it should be fine. Mo normally it is, but even if it gets out of whack, there are some ways to start the job almost where it left off. You know what I mean? So you can kind of gauge. Sometimes you mm -hmm. can recover from those anomalies even with light burn. Okay. And, cool. and, you're, and, yeah, and you're not used to light burn, but light burn, you can actually flip the scan angle. So you can go 180 degrees. So you started out going from the bottom up but now you can flip it to 180 degrees and go from the top down. And once it meets, you shut it off and stop, stop it. Job. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. That's true. Um... <clears throat> Keep on thinking of them, Darcy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like I had other ones that, uh, Oh yeah. Sorry. Like I've been using this laser for so long, but I feel like I'm so out of the laser game as far as like this new now. And when I first got this machine, like the sensor that showed you exactly where like the X, Y point on the lens was on the software. Is that like standard now? Does that all laser machines do that? You you can see the positioning of the laser head in Lightburn. There are, you know, facilities for that, as well as oh, creating great. presets okay. where you could say, I want it to go, you know, to this point. And you could actually save that as a preset and have it go back later. So there's a lot of conventions in Lightburn to help oh, with that cool. kind of thing. Awesome. Sorry, these are I'm so those are very basic questions. I'm sure everyone's so advanced with this machine. <laughs> oh no, that's <laughs> totally good. That's that's what we like. So. Now you got another 25 minutes for this. You can keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Brian will love it. So uh, if she's done, I have a, a question for the group. Yes. Ooh, Thank look. you so much. Oh, my oh, all that was so helpful. Is. Anybody get anything cool for Christmas? Gadgets, gizmos, laser related. Lenses and mirrors. Yeah, we got no. new extra lenses and mirrors. No. Cool I got stuff. I was actually gifted the gun that I shot my deer with this year. Not bad. That's pretty cool. Which was my largest deer I've ever taken in Ohio. I mean, I got a neat gadget around Christmas. I got that robot arm. That's been. That's true. Brian. Yeah. That from Brian to Brian. Yeah. No, it's for my grandson. I'm just going to help him out with it, you know, and learn it until he's old enough. <laughs> that will be so outdated by the time your grandson's old enough. Dude, It'll it was made in 1988. Program. It's already outdated. It was made in Israel. <laughs> well, I got a house for Christmas. There you go. There you go. That's an awesome. Gonna... That's an awesome present. You got a kid coming too for Christmas, somewhat. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's that's probably the most impressive one out of any of us can say. It, I would say so. Well, the house came about because of the kid. So we were going to wait a little bit longer. And then once we found that out, I was like, all right, well, I guess we're getting the house right now. Yeah. No your need moving baby stuff never, twice. <laughs> yeah, your Christmases will never be the same from now on, trust me. Nope. Yep. Negative. Yep. Well, yeah, I can tell you what I don't enjoy is buying furniture. That stuff is way more expensive than I thought it was. It is, and it's all junk now. <laughs> Even the good stuff it is, is press board it and is glue. Junk. Get a hold of Tommy. He'll custom build you some stuff. He's closer than I am. There you go. <laughs> I might just do that. Come uh, to Kentucky. Tommy, yeah, you know. take a trip up here, man. I'll build it for you. Whatever you need. <laughs> well, it saves you a couple, three hours from coming to me, so <laughs> there you go. So Tommy, I did I did a test too with the lenses, as you did, but I did it a little differently. I wanted to oh, see yeah. what the, the major the major difference was between a two inch 
And why? Why do we recommend a four inch to cut through thicker materials? Look at that. Look at the yeah. distance of travel. Oh, so you're yeah. cutting from the top Whoa. down. Yeah, that's the cross yeah, section. Well, no, this, this is just, yeah, this is just a pulse, a pulse through for six seconds to see how far a two inch lens would go and a four inch lens would go. It, it makes sense that the four inch would go deeper for one reason, because the beam is twice as big. So it's uh, ablating more area. So, you know, when you look down a hole, it looks like it gets smaller. There's more area that's actually, you know what I'm saying? What's the like one on the can, far left? Oh, it'd be on your right. This one? Yeah, that, yeah. Hold it up I a little bit. Like, like, contrast like really with your wrong? shirt. There you go. Okay, yeah. there you go. So which oh, ones are the Lord. fours? These are the fours. So those are the four inch. One was uh, the longest one and the straightest one was with uh, about 40 PSI. So nice, straight, continual line. Oh, you're line. blowing air into uh, those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, other, the other ones kind of start to curve a little bit at the ends. You can see. That one is uh, crazy. The two one. In, yeah, this one is, a, that's actually a seven inch lens that I bought a long time ago, a really crappy lens. I wanted to try it out and see if there's a huge difference. And there wasn't, I mean, it wasn't much though, considering. But you can start to see at the bottom of this one, it starts to, to flare out and get dirty. That's pretty cool. Two inch. I, I will say this, and I know, you know, you and I have kind of uh, briefly chatted about it. The experimenting this year has been a blast. I really want to see what the capabilities are, whether, I mean, just because we have two, we get to use y'all's lasers, but, you know, there's so many questions and so many unanswered questions about why we do stuff and why we recommend it. Uh, and just the, frankly, the capabilities. So think, that's been that's been a blast so far over the past few weeks. A good experiment would be have Grant drop one off top of the building, send it to Chris, see if he can put it back together and see if it still works. We've done I, that I already. That's, that's, oh, that's only been on that's, that's, to me. That was only that when was only on a truck. That. FedEx does that for us. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Ryan, that's true. Can we can we share the picture? Which one? Yeah. Uh, the Nova 51 on its back. Where is hey, it? Hey, Jim. Uh, so the big, can you the big the thing is I want to get a hold of a frame, just the frame by itself with some of the electronics and try to turn it into a big 3D printer. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> well, I, I will say this, just being me, you know, we got asked about doing headstones. So if y'all come up with one that's big enough to fit a headstone that I can gut, the whole center of it out. Y'all let me know. Now, now one could cut that you. bar across the front if you had a forklift or something, you could slide it in. Speaking of cutting the bar, when is my warranty up? Is it two years? <laughs> um, You're 35? Yeah, it's two years. Uh, 51. 51? Yeah, two years. Okay. You setting a reminder and going to have your yeah. sawzall charged? Did he reach out to you, Grant? No, but I know this is directly from you. Yeah, it is from me. <laughs> yeah. I would assume Seeing so. as he put it in his review. <laughs> oh, There's oh, no I reason saw... that, that that bar does absolutely nothing. Hey, I just don't want an excuse to void the warranty right now. Right. And Darcy sitting there going, what are these guys? Or guys are all nuts. It's okay. You probably wouldn't need it. There's a, a bar on the front between some of the the doors and panels that you can take off um, and open. And oh, we sorry, were to, to take there the honeycomb good. out, and that bar gets in the way. Um, taking the honeycomb out so that I could slide in. Um, four by eight sheets of plywood. Yeah, I was sliding in full sheets of plywood. We have a 51 and I was sliding in full sheets of plywood and cutting them down in my shop instead of him having to, to get out a circular saw and cut them down outside and then bring them back in. And it's, it's wet and raining today. So it's just a lot easier for me to be able to cut down my own sheet woods. I still can't move the sheet by myself. So I need his help for that but at least I can cut it in my machine down to a more manageable size for my small shop.
Oh, Brian, we've done pretty good. There's like 15. The, the time master has spoken. Oh, it's final thoughts time. Yeah, I got the I got the picture, Chris. You want me to show it? Is that what you want? Yeah, but that's the one. If you pop it up, it will uh, probably. Give me a second here. I don't know what Loco's doing back there, but somebody's like trying to shop apart. I am. There's a video of one of them flipping off of a truck. Yeah, yeah I remember that this one. Might that's be the one, one. I he's talking about. Basically, off the that back of a lift gate that. in its crate. Oh, oh, I hadn't seen that one. I've seen the yeah, one so in the driveway. Well, yeah, so this this was one that fell off, and then I I just uncrated it uh, this morning, and the plan is to actually refurb it. Now it's got some damage on the front uh, or the top, and the the four legs are a little bent up. But other than that, she's in pretty dang good shape. Um, but that'll be the next refurb is uprighting that one, and. Uh, getting it back running again. And that's kind of a I testament to the strength of the frame. I swear you could drive a car on top of these things and leave it sit. Yeah, they're probably they're pretty could. solid. They're built. We, we've got Quite an over 24 blast. that had a crush accident and all of the feet, you know, they're those hard, solid feet that are underneath them. They're just rubber, some kind of hard rubber. They're literally pushed up right in the corners and it broke the welds and everything. The craziest thing. I haven't seen anything quite like it. And uh, it's running. Yeah. There's the bar he was talking about. Yeah. It must have just dropped that machine from like high up and it just went straight flat down. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know why that's there. It makes no sense for it to be there. You saved it? Oh, yeah. I got it. You never know when you well, want to build something. And in case you need to it. tack it back on there and then get your warranty. That's right. <laughs> my warranty. Just in case my warranty. <laughs> Well, I mean, when you think of the the gantry shape, the blue rail is on the left hand side, and then you got the the you know, actual gantry itself. That's the only thing now connecting the two sides of the machine besides the back plate on the back side. So, you uh, know. It's, but it's three bo it's three boxes connected together, and these are stout boxes. I mean, there, there's yeah. no way it's a U. They are it's a U. now. If you were to cut that and then ship it, I think you may have some issues. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. I would uh, for shipping purposes, I think it should be there. Yes, exactly. At least bolt in. As you can see, Darcy, there's many things that can be done with this machine outside of what it's <laughs> advertised what? for. No, it's good. We we do a lot of uh, experimental stuff, so we'll probably <laughs> abuse it sadly. Yeah, there's plenty of that that goes on. Yep. They I think it's tough. basically just to see how far the limits of this machine can actually be pushed before it does bend. Yeah. Travis has well, done Chris a little is... bit of that too. Yeah, uh, Travis is like the master of doing crazy stuff with a machine. Hey, I, I do have something to report since the last time I was here though. I what finally broke my first laser lens. Really? Yeah. After how many years? Seven. <laughs> nice. Wow. Some people break uh, the first one in seven go, minutes. Flag. <laughs> yep. So yeah, as long as you take care of them, they'll last a long time. I was waiting for that question because I was waiting. For, hopefully, he's going to get on when she asked that question. I'm like, I know well, Travis has finally replaced his I, first one. I don't oh, have a, a polarizer. I want to get one, but I would like to get a polarizer. If you have any old optics ever, I'd like to get a handful of different ones with maybe an expiration date or when they were purchased or something like that. I'd like to look and see if they get cloudy over time and things like that. Even if they're clean and even if they look decent, I wonder if the occlusions can get worse over time and they get cloudy. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I'll throw, I've got a microscope with a polarizer. Um, okay. I'll throw a couple of my older lenses under it and take a look. See what you can come up with. I, I found a lighted polarizer on Amazon for a hundred bucks, but I'm too cheap to to spend a hundred bucks <laughs> on it. So. so for tech support, reference the lenses. And this is, I'm just curious. Have y'all, because of the amount of lenses I see, especially on social media, is it moisture? Is that the the primary cause? Is it a def, you know a defect? I mean, the primary I, cause I, is them. Hurt things. Yeah, is them fouling because they get 
smoke and dirt or whatever on them, uh, either from not enough air assist or improper preventative maintenance and cleaning. That is the, that's the number one uh, ever. Um, we have had some failures like delamination, you know, where the coatings come off or something like that. And of course we warrant those, you know, no, no worries. Um, but typically all the things that you're going to see are from thermal insult, you know, because they started uh, absorbing the laser beam instead of passing it due to whatever reason. And I think about it like this, the beam is invisible. So I'm thinking there could be some stuff that I can't see on that laser lens that may still you know, uh, impede the beam because I can't see the beam. Maybe I can't see what it, you know, can't pass through. So it doesn't take very much. You know, you know what I mean? I, um, and I'm terrible about cleaning my lenses. Luckily, I've only burned one up in my in my time so far. I better knock on wood. So would the uh, second would the second problem be water then? Compared to that, with the second number we one, don't two, we don't see water typically because I'd say I don't know what do you think, Chris? Seventy percent, maybe eighty of the lasers that are out there are using the stock pump, uh, and it doesn't oh, okay. have sufficient heat or pressure uh, to create condensate. So I thought there was more out there with. And the other thing to remember is post cleaning, let the lens dry before you reintroduce dust into it. Yeah, it's Actually, it's permeable. I, Actually, what and I end up from, doing is I, oh, I'm sorry. And when you clean it, don't drag a dirty swab or dirty wipe across it. So am I dumb by once or I get done cleaning it? And by the time I get it put in there, I think it's pretty dry. But I actually, I hit the air button to finish making sure everything is dry inside of there. That'll, that'll dry the bottom side. Yeah, the top side still gets no air. <clears throat> yeah, but I meant just to make sure that the nozzle and all that's cleaned or you know what are you using to clean it with that's not drying almost instantly jim well no it's alcohol spit and his t-shirt <laughs> and his t-shirt I, I, I let, no i just hold it down i let the dog lick it yeah, as um, long as you're using uh using use alcohol 90%. on it by the yeah, time I, you get that thing reassembled it should be clean yeah, or be dry I, and i use the 90 percent alcohols so i don't use the yeah. 70. I, I, I don't, he's 99. well i it's 90 plus i think it's i don't what it is every time you flammable. open it you introduce more water into it remember that so yeah so and then jim uh yeah just quit using everclear just switch to uh 99 yeah. isopropyl yeah, you're alcohol. supposed to clean the lens not drink it <laughs> well, he's anyway. cleaning hey, something. Is, you guys did ask what we else got for christmas well i did get an actual big mason jar of uh the good stuff that's yeah <laughs> from secret locations uh-huh so that's In what i'm going to start calling friday nights from now on i'm not drinking i'm lens cleaning <laughs> there you go there you go. i'll wait till the after show and include that part of what was well, happened well, with that <laughs> we, we got about eight more minutes if anybody has any more questions most of the guys on here you'll notice darcy are regulars so we get kind of you know uh relaxed over here but yeah uh, no, that's that's great it's awesome that there's like so many people that understand this machine so yeah you'll um, you'll not have a shortage of help that's for sure but if you have anything else you know feel yeah free. how's um how's like the noise level of the machine so the loudest part of it's going to be the chiller when the fans are on when it's in a compression cycle um mm -hmm. I I ran started one. Mine. if you that's all the noise you're going to hear starting up and mine's running right now yeah. So the good news is like the air assist and the exhaust fan and all that stuff comes on when the job starts. So it's not running continually or you don't have to manually turn it on. It's sitting there running while you're getting ready and that kind of thing. There's some autonomy there that can help with that. I haven't done an SPL test on the uh, current setup because the machine that I have has a different air, a uh, different exhaust uh, fan, but even the loud fan, uh, I think it was somewhere around 70 decibels. It's less than, Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's it's not terrible. It's quieter than a vacuum cleaner, even if everything's running at the same time. And that wow, that's amazing. Like, the two loudest things is going to be your your chiller and your exhaust fan. Yeah, chiller our, fan our chiller and... that we have right now is like deafening. So my, my chiller's definitely... actually my chiller's actually running right now, and I'm sitting five feet from it. Yeah. Wow. Now, okay, that's great. The last time that I checked, those AC fans that are in there for the cooling on that uh, chiller. Uh, 
they are actually pretty expensive. Um, I, I've looked them up and they're super quiet compared to some others. The, the, we, we use SNA chillers. Uh, and I know there's a few different brands out there and I don't know what the loudness is. Now we do have on our support ticket our, our knowledge base, um, we have some noise levels of the individual components and then there's some other articles in there about the aggregate noise level, you know, when everything's running. Some of it's a little dated for, you know, a machine like I was saying that may have a centrifugal fan, which were significantly louder. Mm -hmm. um, Hey, Brian, don't mean to cut yeah. you off. Seven, 72 decibels when the, uh, it spikes at 72 decibels when the uh, fan kicks on the chiller. For the chiller? I just checked okay. It. I just checked it, so. Perfect. We, we yeah, I was thinking okay. it was around that. Yeah. How much was that it's, decibel checker? Because Brian probably wouldn't buy one of those either. It's on her phone or watch. It's my watch. I, it's my I've got, you know. It's one of those. I got Mac a sound things. checker. It's one of those oh, Mac things. You know how they are. I got all kinds <laughs> of neat testy tools. <laughs> Need to use some of them. So. Yeah, you think that little tiny pinhole with no foam, no real good gain on it, it's going to give you an accurate reading, though? No. It does. It does good heart rate, too. Yeah, just because it's, it's going to give you an accurate EKG. Is this yeah. an Apple thing? It does. It does. <laughs> Ask is my wife Myers going off? Is, is Myers going off on the Apple tangent? Yes, I can I, see my heart. I started it. <laughs> there you go, Jim. Thanks, hey. Jim. And there are troublemakers in the group, and I'm not one of them. Just to let you know. Yes, you story. are. <laughs> he had his fingers crossed when he said that. Loco's right there with us on Mac. He understands us. I love. I love <laughs> Apple. That, that's yeah, like saying me. that I never put my my lasers through hell at all. I love to eat apples, as long as they're golden delicious, but that's about it. I would never eat a white apple. Ugh. Well, I'm going to kill the recording a few minutes early. Probably a good thing. So, had it wait. <laughs>